hello all. Um, I am not going to be on cam tonight because I had a bit of a uh, medical event on uh, Friday night and I look like hell, so I will not inflict that on you. Um, tonight we are playing Maelstrom by Alexander Scott and republished more recently by Arian Games. Uh, this is an old-school British RPG. It's percentile-based. It's a lot more historical than a lot of RPGs being set in Tudor times. Um, the writer, I think, was only like 19 or something, possibly even younger, uh, when he wrote it and was somehow given the opportunity <laughs> to write this game back then when it was first published in, what was it, 19, 1984. So this was around at the same time as Dragon Warriors, which we've played on this channel before in the past. Um, I think they're both fine examples of early British RPGs, uh, given the historical or semi-historical settings. Um, yeah, I don't know. British RPGs just kind of hit different. <laughs> you can see that in Fighting Fantasy. You can see that in Warhammer. You can see that in Dragon Warriors. And you can see it in Maelstrom. It has a few quirks to its system. So we might stumble a bit here and there, um, especially since I'm not feeling 100%. But we will try and be entertaining and show off the system as best we can. So let's bring the players in. <laughs> I hadn't seen what you changed your avatar to there. <laughs> the, the lettuce with the beard is uh, wonderful. <laughs> That's I mean, the picture that you gave us looked like a man. and Yeah. <laughs> yes. And that's very clearly uh, a woman with <laughs> some sort of merkin straps to her lip. <laughs> but uh, yes, I like it. As you may be able to tell, uh, while it's a serious game, we were not entirely able to completely ignore Blackadder. So yes, <laughs> I will try and be somewhat serious. Uh, there is that. The concept for the game is that the players are all agents of Walsingham, Elizabeth's notorious uh, spymaster, who foiled many an assassination plot and other bits of shenanigans against the Virgin Queen. So uh, our unlikely rabble of rapscallions, bawds, braggarts and criminals uh, has been co-opted to work for the crown, otherwise their heads should be cloven from their bodies. So getting getting paid to do skullduggery is definitely a better option. Uh, would you care to introduce your characters, please? Uh, starting uh, with Parry, I think. Um, Parry Anstey, um, thin as a spider's leg, perpetually busy hands. It looks like he's almost got one too many knuckles on each of his fingers, they're sort of constantly in motion, fiddling with something. Um, he's also ink-stained quite a lot of the time. Uh, he is um, my Lord Walsingham's um, forger agent, um, and um, he tends towards, how can I put it, he tends towards reform in religion as you can tell from his sober attire, and therefore, of course, he is completely on board with Walsingham's scheme. <laughs> and uh, Lettuce or Bob? Uh, so I'm Bob. Um, I'm an actor. Um, clearly not a woman, because women aren't allowed to be actors. Men had to play the roles of women, so I used to play the role of women, because obviously I look bit like one but i'm definitely not one um <clears throat> and, and after being outed as a woman which was absolutely scandalous because as you can see i have a beard um 
I ended up on the streets and have to use my active skills for money and sympathy. Um, but I've now been recruited by Walsingham to use those skills in espionage. So, although I was destined for for the great age in uh, in London, unfortunately, I I can't as I can't achieve my goal there, but I I can still at least be paid to act. So. That's that's something. And uh, Bernard. Oh, <laughs> uh, Bernard. I haven't really got a character description, so I'm going to have to just make it up on the fly, I guess. Yeah. Im Improvise. <laughs> uh, you're, you're a herbalist, I'm, aren't I'm you? Herbalist. And a burglar. Yeah, I'm a bit simple, me. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fine. That, that'll do. Uh, yeah, you were probably trying to steal some expensive ingredients or something from one of your herbal concoctions. Uh, from some townhouse or something when you, when you got caught and uh, it was it was the gallows or work for Walsingham by putting your your herb law and sadly somewhat woeful burglary skills to uh, to work for him. So that introduces our players. Uh, you all have rooms somewhere appropriate to your station. Um, which you know you receive a, a small stipend from Walsingham plus uh, plus mission based pay when you're called upon, but it wouldn't do for you to live above your station. So I'm uh, I'm afraid that uh, Bob is probably either living on the street or in a crowded room with a bunch of other tenants. Um, the other the other two have some some skill some social standing, so you're at least allowed a roof over your heads. But one way or another, by hook or by crook, each of you has received an envelope, either posted through your door, pushed under your door, or tucked in next to you while you're asleep. Each envelope contains a black and white feather, which is a coded signal from Walsingham uh, that you should make your way to the Magpie Pub in order to be briefed for some sort of mission. Well, in that case, Master Anstey will. Uh, uh, well, I'll... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, you go ahead. Sorry. Um, is the uh, is the Magpie a salubrious venue? It is a decidedly non-salubrious venue. Uh, insalubrious. Okay. In that case, uh, I won't bother dressing up too much. <laughs> I won't put on my <laughs> best. Won't put on my best shoes. You know, that takes hell to scrub the London filth off those little rosettes on the toes. Um, <laughs> so uh, yes, I will um, uh, put on a, a, a sort of uh, an older pair of hose and, uh, and uh, my my third best shoes. Um, <laughs> Uh, I will. I will carry one dagger openly. Um, I'm. I infer I'm if, if, sort of gen, on the lower fringes of gentry, being a guildsman. Yes. Um, yeah. So you can get away with wearing a, you know, a dagger and sword, or both, or. Oh well. Um, oh, tough. Am I supposed? Are we supposed to be being? Are we supposed to be being covert? Um, you are supposed to be covert by your very nature. Right. In that case, I'm not going to run into... Go on. Well, a gentleman would wear swords openly yes, at the time, exactly. as much as a fashion statement as anything else. Yes. Um, so, yes, I will um, gird myself with my... I think I have a sword. I'm pretty sure I read that. Yes, sword. Yes, I will take my sword yes. with me. Okay. It's probably probably broader than you are, even if it's a rapier. <laughs> All right. So yes, you you uh, dress suitably, and uh, gather your your wits and your weapons, and uh, head out into the the morning mist across London to find your way to the Magpie. Uh, so what about Bob? Hmm. Um, so I'll, I'll head to the 
pub and try to blend in with the local riffraff who I'm assuming will be drinking there. Um, you're probably the closest, so you'll probably get there before anyone else. Uh, let's make a roll just for the sake of showing how the system works. So blending in with the riffraff. Uh, let's see. So there aren't skills per se. Rather, you have abilities which allow you to do certain things or might grant you a small bonus if I deem it applicable. But pretty much everything is done as saving rolls against your statistics. So uh, let's see. I mean, no, you are riffraff. Which I guess, Lord. Yeah, well, there yeah. will be what what allows more, you to do it. Um, more for a man, I'm probably yeah. gonna have to. Um, uh, I think we can say you're that, very okay. experienced as as passing yourself off as a man. Uh, you do have web of contacts and underworld contacts, so you know you're definitely in this kind of group. So to pass and blend in, just for the sake of doing a role, really. Let's go with persuasion, and you can add 20 to it. So that gives you 65%. Okay, and do I, what do I roll? Is it D100? Uh, D D100 and get under 65, or 65 or under. Well, I have failed. Um, someone has clearly okay. noticed the strings attached to my beard. What? I got seven. How badly did you fail? What did you roll? I rolled 70. Okay, well, it's not a critical failure. All right. You're, you're perhaps over-egging the pudding slightly, seeming a little bit more... Um, like someone else's impression of the of the poor struggling underclass. Maybe, maybe the fake hunch was pushing it a bit too far. Um so uh, people are acting a, a little suspiciously of you and uh, are sort of hushing their voices and turning away. Um, so, yes, yeah, your acting skills weren't quite up to snuff today, unfortunately. Uh, but since you have, you know, you have underworld contacts, there are a few people around who you do actually know who are part of the criminal underworld, uh, probably people who roamed here overnight. So... Uh, grabbing some food and drink to start the day. Uh, lastly, Bernard. <laughs> I'm going to have my breakfast first. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, as a herbalist, uh, you have ready access to plants of many kinds, so you can probably uh, put something together. Turnips, most likely. <laughs> <laughs> Also, just to spoon out some pottage that's been uh, cooking all night and put in some new ingredients for the day. So, yeah, you can fill your belly. And then you notice the, the envelope tucked under your door. Uh, well, I suppose I'll uh, he head out once some form ready. Yeah, with a, with a full warm belly and... Um, Intrigued by whatever mission this might be, uh, you head out and make your way down towards the Thames, where the magpie is tucked back just a couple of streets. So, yeah, the, the magpie is an old uh, down-at-heel establishment, um, three floors leaning out crazily over the street, creating deep shadows underneath and almost touching the building on the other side. Uh, it's leant over so crazily that you almost wish it did touch the building on the other side, because otherwise it looks like it's tottering on the brink of collapse. The sign outside is a crudely painted one with two magpies painted on it. Uh, they haven't bothered spelling out the name because not enough of the clientele can read. So it's got that going for it. Um, the fire is low. There is food, stuff that's been stewing all night, and there is plenty of cheap ale, though it has been watered down quite significantly. 
Uh, once you have all arrived, uh, Molly, who is one of the people that runs the place, uh, comes by each of you, uh, gives you a, a tap on the shoulder and points upwards, indicating that you should go to one of the private rooms upstairs. I suppose I'll head up then. Yeah, All right. Up. Bert, Bernard's a, a stout fellow, and uh, the stairs creak ominously uh, with every step upwards, uh, and it's quite narrow. Uh, you run into someone else coming down the stairs, but uh, they take one look at Bernard and then back up to make room. So you get up to the top. You know, it's it's morning despite the mist. There should be light, but very little light penetrates inside through the grubby little diamond glass pane windows. Um, and because of the, the overhangs and the shadows of the alley beyond, uh, so even though it's morning, there are stinking candles made of fat burning in most of the rooms. Well, burning's generous, sputtering, smouldering, casting very little light. Uh, one of the rooms, uh, the door is open. And uh, you can see uh, through the gap in the door uh, a gentleman shrouded in a hooded cloak sat at a big table inside the room. That is probably your man. Well, I suppose I'll so. say... All right, what's this about then? It looks up at you. He's wearing a uh, metal dueling mask to protect his features. But he pulls it away, and you recognize it's Walsingham himself who has deigned to come down into the gutter to meet you all. Ah, Mr. Blakewell, do, do come in, sit down. Uh, Mr. Winter, Mr. Anstey, please close the door behind you. Don't mind if I do. I take a <laughs> take a seat. Yeah, the, the chairs are, are rickety and poorly made, but well worn. So the, the wood has been polished smooth by the passage of many a buttock. So it's surprisingly comfortable, even if they are a little uneven. Right, Walsingham waits for you all to situate yourselves, and he takes out a, a long-stemmed clay pipe. Uh, packs some of that fancy tobacco stuff into it and lights it from the sputtering candle. So, as you're aware, there are many plots against the Queen and against her counsellors. Uh, we must be constantly vigilant for any trouble. There has been a rather high-profile theft last night, not this night previous, the night before. Uh, Mr. D has misplaced his mirror. A mirror? I, Mr. Blakewell, a mirror. A black spirit mirror with which he says he can he says he, he can scry and talk to spirits and so forth. Mr. D is, of course, astrologer to the Queen and advises her on supernatural matters. Walsingham takes a, a long drag on the pipe and blows a ring of smoke up towards the ceiling. I, I assume you want us to find whoever nicked it and nick it back? That would be uh, cutting the matter down to its nub, uh, Mr. Winter. Yes. We need this back, even if, as I suspect, uh, Mr. D's goings-on are um, not quite as powerful as he likes to make them out to be. It would be a good idea to keep Mr. D in uh, in good spirits, shall we say. He snorts slightly at his pun, puffing smoke through his nostrils. 
but there are other think... considerations as well. Sorry, go on. Seems like witchcraft to me, the kind of stuff he's been up to. We lost Bernard. Well, yes, accusations of witchcraft are um, unhelpful. And, you know, we are having all manner of problems with papists at the moment, as I'm sure you're aware. And uh, so if they can pin any accusations of witchcraft and so on upon us, upon the crown, certainly, uh, that will make things um, difficult for us. A woman with power offends them enough, but should the queen turn out to be a witch, well. So do we have any leads? Well, you'll be free to investigate as you wish. Um, I have a letter of passage which you can use to enter Mr. D's um, property and to examine it. Unfortunately, uh, we're in a situation where there are simply too many candidates uh, for me to narrow it down at all for you. There are always agents of, of Rome and its various client countries. Uh, could be the Dutch, could be um, any number of people. It could simply be a petty criminal who saw an open window and chance they're on. It's uh, impossible to tell. But uh, I trust you, my group of renegades, uh, has the skills necessary to get to the root of the problem. I'm sure we can find it. Uh, what's the, what are we being paid for this? <laughs> Yes, straight to the point, I suppose. I shall pay you each pound upon retrieval of the mirror. I shall grant you each an allowance of ten shillings. Now. He uh, reaches into his cloak um, and pulls out several small purses of monies and sets them before you. And Mr. D, is he offering any reward on top of that for the return of his mirror? That would be uh, for you and Mr. D to uh, negotiate amongst yourselves. But I'm sure he could be persuaded. Well, a man who can speak to angels, or he can cough up a few pounds. Yes, you'd think the uh, bounty of heaven would fall upon such a fellow. Uh, well, does anyone else have any questions before we head off? Uh, no, Anstey, um, unless anybody else is going to volunteer, will take the um, take the passport, uh, examining it with um, professional interest as much as anything else, glancing at the seals attached to it. Presumably there are Walsingham's and or a sort of royal small seal or something. Uh, yes, both Walsingham's personal seal and a small royal seal. Yeah. Um, now... Dee's mirror, he says. It is within a brass case. It is circular. Uh, it hinges at the top. The mirror inside is of black obsidian glass. A small compact mirror such as a woman might use to do her makeup for black. Not that I would know some, what a woman would use to do her makeup. Of course not. <laughs> uh, some somewhat larger. Okay. And it is said to have mystical powers. Whatever stock you put in that, uh, whatever your relationship with God, you may wish to be more or less cautious. Uh, 
Are, are you back? Yes. Sorry, my name went down. Okay. No problem. Um, so yeah, someone stole Dr. John D's magical mirror um, from his London house. Uh, you've been tasked with getting it back. Walsingham couldn't really uh, tell you much else because there are simply too many suspects. He described the mirror to you and gave you um, a letter of passage, which you can use to show uh, Dr. D that you're working with, with Walsingham, should you wish to examine his abode. Um, and that's pretty much it. So if you have any other questions or anything, now's the time. And if we were to find the uh, the miscreants in this case, what authority do we have to deal with them? Or are we to turn them over to the Her Majesty's constabulary? Uh, such an assault on the Queen's court uh, cannot go unpunished. If you can take any of the miscreants alive, uh, I'm sure a short stay in the, in the tower would uh, elucidate matters to a large extent, um, but the thing of most importance is to get the mirror back. Understood, my lord. Well then, I shall leave you to your labours. Uh, he picks himself up puts his mask back upon his face and leaves. Uh, a person you didn't notice until just now, who was lurking in the shadows in the back of the dim and grimy room, uh, emerges from those shadows and falls in behind Walsingham, following him out. and you are left in the room with the purses of shillings before you. I suppose we head to D's residence and have a chat. Unless anyone wants to do anything beforehand. I rather think I'd better uh, change into something a little more suitable. Where was Dee's yeah, house? I want to say Mortlake, but I can't yes. remember. Yeah, yeah Mortlake. Yeah. Um, so uh, you're quite away from where you are, I think. And Mortlake at this time is basically a little garden village, isn't it, I think? Yes. Uh Trying to find any oh, good morning meaningful landmarks. Carriage. Yes, you easily have enough for a, for a carriage. Um, yeah, it's a little area on the bank of the Thames, out sort of Putney Way. <laughs> Where the wise woman lives. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. How far away is it? Do you think? Uh, well, you're kind of central London, so it's uh, yeah. I'm guessing about about three miles in the roundabout sort of way. You're going to have to go. So you you could hoof it if you really wanted to, but walking that fire that far through um london muck and then the rest of the way across the uh, across the marshes and so on yeah it's probably not not great <laughs> do any of you have horses under your equipment uh, i it's not worth me checking on the 
No, probably not. I do not have a horse. Um, what are, what exactly are the terms of this letter we have? Are they that you are to re render the bearers all possible aid, sort of terms? Uh, yes, pretty much. Um, these are my trusted agents. I, I have sent to investigate uh, the matter you brought to me. Uh, please cooperate with them to the fullest extent uh, within reason. So oh, well, that's fine. the best I'll chance. Take, I'll just take it to the nearest ostlers then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, he'll he, well, he'll take a deposit off you uh, for the for the horses, and uh, but he seems very impressed with the letter. He can't read, but he knows what the seals mean, mm. so it's ha happy enough with that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so you can r rent three ponies and uh, ride off to Putney. All right, so uh, let's just see if there are any incidents. You're you're mostly city folk. Uh, so let's see, riding. Uh, add twenty to your endurance and roll under it. But unless you get a catastrophic failure, you're not going to be too hurt by anything. Add 20 to endurance and roll under it. Cool. Oh, I've, I've rolled very badly. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, I've, I've rolled over it as well. Okay. But neither of you rolled 96 or higher? No. No. Okay. Uh, did Parry succeed? Uh, no, a marginal failure, 67 <laughs> over 59. Okay, so basically none of you are very good with horses. Um, dangerous at both ends and evil in the middle, or however the saying goes. Uh, so it's it's an uncomfortable ride, and they keep shying away from things, especially once you, you know, get out of the city proper and they encounter the countryside, these being very sort of urban ponies. So it's it's uncomfortable. Um, your asses are rather sore, and you've quite had enough of horses uh, when you arrive in Mortlake and uh, track down uh, Mister D's house. It's a, a nice little country abode. It has a fairly high wall around most of it to keep the riffraff out. Um, and he has had sharp pieces of glass set into the uh, top of the uh, top of the walls to deter intruders, but it doesn't appear to have worked particularly well. Um, there is a, a gate at the front, and um, there is a, a guard, clearly a, a mercenary or a paid cutthroat or something, sort of lounging at the front gate, leant against the wall, eating an apple. Oh, uh, thank you, Fridge Reaver, for stopping by. Mm -hmm. Seeing the comments. Uh, the oh, guard looks oh, up at you as you arrive with the ponies. Uh, we're here on official business. Whose official business is that, then? He crunches another mouthful of apple. Uh, I believe you have the, the letter, Mr. Kirsty. Yeah, Anstey, who's been bouncing along, trying to pretend he wasn't <laughs> having, <laughs> having difficulty staying upright, um, yeah. gets down with obvious relief from this beast and leads it over to this man. Um, not that he's confident that the man can read the document, but again, seals carry a lot of weight. Um, yeah. And uh, he taps the little red wax blob at the bottom. The most official kind of official business. Yeah. Um, the guard pushes his, his oversized floppy cloth cap uh, back on his head and sort of squints at the writing. You can see his lips moving. Um, he goes, ah, right, yes, I think uh, I think Mr. D 
the good doctor is uh, expecting visitors uh, of your kind. Uh, leave leave the, uh, the the ponies with me. I'll, I'll see to them. Um, he removes a fairly sizable key from inside his shirt um, on a sort of rope hung around his neck. Uh, and having to bend over to unlock the gate, he does so. A very heavy and satisfying clank. Um, I don't know whether this is any. I have any kind of skill for this. Um, let's have a look. I've got several forms of contact, but none of them are specific to what I'm about to ask. Which is, um, is he a professional? Does he carry himself? Is he, are his weapons slung in such a way as they're ready for use, or are they just shoved in his belt? That sort of thing. Uh, let's see. What would be good for that? Uh, make a... Well, you know the underworld, and you've got black market contacts, and you deal with forgers and, yeah, nasty Liars. people of all kinds. <laughs> yeah. Um, so add 10 to your persuasion and roll equal or under that. Yep. Okay. Forty on the nose under with plus ten, fifty-five. So yeah, success by fifteen. Uh, yeah, th this guy knows knows what he's about. Um, you don't recognise him as being another of Walsingham's men per se, but he's he's clearly uh, a bit of a, a bit of a cutthroat and a and a mercenary who knows his way around. So yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. he he's dressed to fight, not for show. Mm -hmm. Tell me, you were on duty the night before last? No, I was brought in after the uh, after the break in. Ah, I see. Yeah, I was uh, down at the inn, and uh, a gentleman in a mask came in to see me, offered me a, a fair bit of clink to come and look after Mister D's place, reassure him, and all that. You know. I see. I see. It is a terrible sign of the times we live in, where people are loath to reveal their identities. He says, glancing across at Bob. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are. Just uh, hand me those reins and go on in. I'll uh, I'll see to the ponies. Um, yeah, uh, uh, do so. Um on the way, I'm assuming it's some kind of like sort of uh, low privet hedge formal garden, sort of fairly typical Elizabethan sort of thing going on. Uh, yes, um, though the house doesn't have particularly huge and extensive gardens, so only the, a very small, maybe a third por portion, of about a third the size of the front garden, is ornamental. Mm -hmm. um, the smaller sort of square gardens either side. Uh, almost kitchen gardens but there's a, a lot of more unusual plants in there which bernard might recognize um though you're just kind of seeing them briefly on your way in do you want to make a perception roll for bernard with plus 20 to his perception Evening viewers, I think we have a record for the most number of people actually watching a stream live, so that's nice. Well, how many do we have? Uh, we hit 50 and then it dropped down again. <laughs> Tip, tips for re-rolls, tips for re-rolls. Yes, tips for re-rolls. <laughs> uh, Jack, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, can you make that perception roll, please? Oh, right. So add 20 to your perception. Oh, well, uh, equal or under. No? Like, way under. Way under. Oh, okay. wait, no. Ooh. Hold on. If I'm supposed to be rolling under, um, I rolled a two. Okay, that's a critical success. The, oh, at the top is this core failure. Yeah. All right. Um, so, yeah, just walking along this this little path through the tiny, sort of more ornamental garden with the with the hedging and yeah, you know, flowers and so on. But looking either side into what, uh, for, to any normal person, their glance would say that's a kitchen garden. But to your herbalist's eye, you can see mandrake and all sorts of other 
more occult, uh, medicinal, and alchemical plants uh, growing in Mr. D's gardens. Um, and slightly oddly, lots of things seem to be growing quite well out of season in his garden, which is oh, a little bit <laughs> <laughs> he, he won't mind if you, a couple of these go missing, will he? <laughs> Surely not. <laughs> do, do you want to blag a couple of rare herbs? Uh, I'll have a glance around, see if everyone's looking first. <laughs> can... uh, well, the guard's busy putting the ponies away. Uh, Mr. D is presumably inside his house. And uh, Parry and Bob are presumably heading on towards the front door. Well, I mean, if 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 it requires uh, Master Blakewell to depart from the um, gravel path, uh, jumping over a couple of low privet hedges to start uprooting this stuff from the man's garden, <laughs> um, I, I will just sort of glance up at what are presumably a bank of windows from this house, which we can't see inside of, but they can see yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. What? So, yeah, Bernard can take... Herbs to his heart's content, should he so wish. Do, do you want to root through Dr. John D's garden like a pig after a truffle, or or not? Yeah. I suppose it's not so wise, is it? Well, you could always uh, ask him. Yeah, we, we could just ask him nicely if you could take a few samples of things. We are doing him a favour. I keep keep that in mind, though. All right, yeah, you arrive at the front door. It's a pretty solid-looking door with a, a modern lock, um, stout oak uh, bound with iron, and in the um, the beam above the door, someone has inscribed some obscure and unsettling-looking runes. The person is definitely a witch. <laughs> There is a big round door knocker in the shape of a entwined serpent. I'm gonna sort of poke, point my staff towards the runes and say, "What do you so you make of this then?" Oh, witchcraft, isn't it? Clearly, a woman pretending to be a man, and it's a witch. <laughs> um, now, Anstey can read and write. And he's also a he's also a forger, amongst other things. And mm -hmm. you know he he's 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 forged a fair few um, ancient charters, proving certain things in his time. Um, mm -hmm. So he's I'm he, he may or may not have a familiarity with scripts like Hebrew, um, archaic scripts like Unsealed and things like that that would look runic to most people. Yeah, are these I mean, they or are these in the box by John D? So, yeah, take uh, take 20 away from your perception and roll under what remains 21 69. So, no, that's a fairly substantial fail, but not critical. Oh, yeah, but it is a 69, so nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, no, you don't, you don't recognize these, recognize these runes. Um, they are quite linear. Um, sort of squarish, and at each turn in the rune, there is a circular indent, like someone has stabbed the wood with the tip of a knife and then twisted it around. Uh, well, Anstey has his doubts that this is, is this is, that this means anything at all. He is firmly of the view that D is a charlatan. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and uh, so he's just like, you know, yeah, this is fairground barking stuff. He doesn't regard it as particularly sinister. <laughs> what do I make of it, Master Blakewell? Not much. It is, to me, childish gibberish. Well, I don't know. I can't read, so. Is there a thing I can read? 
that I don't think so. I think it has to say literate on your sheet for you to be able to read. Um, or it has to be of key importance to your uh, career. I can All right. Uh, there, is, there is a clunk sound from behind the door as you prevaricate and argue amongst yourselves. Uh, and it flies open. Um, a, a man in a long robe with a rough collar uh, and with a sort of skull cap on um, a, appears out of the gloom within the house, uh, waving a short piece of stick at you. Come back to take more, have you, knaves? I'll, I'll make the sign of the cross. Um, what? <laughs> what? You're not a papist, are you? <laughs> no, no, of course not. Um, now, we're, we're here on official business. We were sent by Walsingham. That likely story. Uh, show him the paper, Anstey. With your permission, Doctor. Reaching slowly into my doublet. Draw it out. Easy. <laughs> he, he waves his wand threateningly at you. Slowly. Um, I, actually, I won't bother unrolling it. I will leave it rolled or folded, whatever it is, and, and hand it to him as gingerly as possible. <laughs> Right. He takes it and backs away a couple of steps and uh, unfolds the letter to look at it. Uh, you see his eyes scanning swiftly over the page. And it seems to be a, a very practiced reader. Ah, right. So you are from Walsingham. Very, very well, very well. Come in, come in, come in. Um, it's uh, quite, quite cramped and low-ceilinged in here. Um, but cosy enough. There are strange smells about the place that you can't quite place. One moment you get a hint of incense, uh, then rosemary, uh, then some other smell that you can't exactly make sense of. Um, he sticks his head out the door, looks around suspiciously, and then closes the door again and puts a big wooden bar across it. No, well... Uh, be about your business then. Uh, whatever you need to find my mirror, I must have it. Of course, Doctor. Of course. Um, tell me, you uh, you had he, glancing back at the uh, bar that he's just lowered in place. You had such precautions in place on the night of the theft, did you? Yes, I, I take considerable precautions against spies and peeping toms and anyone who might come in and, and take my things. I would employ guards, but the uh, the science that I engage in here is beyond the ken of most mortal men. They would uh, judge most harshly for it. So unfortunately, I cannot employ much in the way of uh, guards, alas. But... Uh, the security I have has not failed me before now. And what uh, what measures do you take? Uh, there is a high wall around my house, topped with razored shards of glass. I have modern locks uh, around the place. Uh, Walsingham occasionally sends someone by to keep an eye on me. And I have placed many magical wards and alarms around my house. Can Anstey keep the curl of contempt out of his face when he sort of when he said that? I don't know. Um, <laughs> whatever, whatever the stat for self-control is, he probably fails it. Anyway, um, <laughs> but um, if it is not intrusive, might we permitted this? Might we be permitted to see the location from which the item was removed? Of course, of course. Uh, yes, uh, follow me. It's just down here. He gestures with the wand, which he's still carrying. Um, walks a short distance down the corridor, um, opens a, a side door and, and ducks into it. Here we are. Uh, this appears to be some sort of ritual space, you think? Um, it would normally be like the main dining room of a, of a respectable house. Uh, but he has turned it into a sort of... Um, 
alchemical laboratory slash temple of some kind. Um, there is an altar uh, covered in black cloth. Um, you can see an indentation on it, uh, which looks the right size and shape for where the mirror may have been. And there are other peculiar oddments uh, arrayed across it, crystals, um, a skull of some deformed person from the look of it. Um, there are many, many expensive candles. Uh, there are scroll racks stuffed with scrolls. There are a bookcase full of books, uh, many of them very old looking, many of them equipped with heavy leather covers and metal locks to lock the books shut. Um, there's a lectern which has a, a big grimoire open upon it. Uh, there is some sort of gigantic stuffed lizard of some kind hanging from the ceiling. Um, there are incense burners, there are jugs of oil, unguents and various other things. There's chalk um, and there are patterns drawn on the floor in that chalk which have just recently been scuffed out. So yeah, it's everything you would expect of a wizard's study. Definitely witchcraft going on here. Uh, the mirror was there upon the altar. I had uh, consulted it before taking to my bed that night. Um, so uh, uh, Anthony is kind of uh, loitering by the door, actually. he's <laughs> He hasn't gone in here so far. Um, but from the door, exits, windows, etc. Anything, any obvious point of ingress? Um, so he has quite large windows for the for the for the period for the time. Um, sort of big, tall, almost church-like windows, except they have um, handles and catches, so they can be opened and closed um, quite widely. Uh, you imagine that after he's been burning a lot of incense and doing alchemy in here, he probably needs to air the room out, which is you know, why he's got the big windows. Those would be the most obvious way in and out of the room, unless they got into the house some other way and then made their way through um, to here. Uh, Mr. D, is it possible uh, yes. that, the that you, the devils that you communicate with through this mirror came and took the mirror? I strive only to communicate with angels, sir, uh, the forces of, of God and, and goodness, not devils. Whenever I have communicated with devils, I have abjured them, sir. I have bound them. I have punished them for their misdeeds against God. I see, I see. If they were to take uh, offense and to take up arms against me, they would find my house far more impregnable than any human thief would find it. So we need to we need to try and get to the bottom of who would have taken it then. I have rivals, I, I suppose, uh, fellow magicians who covet my position, my power, and my artifacts. Or it could be some force seeking to act against the queen, or some piddling little street rat who just uh, saw an opportunity. But I believe to get into my house would have taken effort, sir. And who, who knew that you had this uh, device and that you kept it here? Well, I take it with me um, when I room in uh, in the palace. I have it with me. Uh, when I consult with the queen, I, I have it with me. Um, courtiers or those who have uh, attended court of late uh, would know of it, but I don't believe anyone could be certain it was here with me on that night. Moving gingerly round the edge of the room, trying not to step into the circles, the remnants of the circles. <laughs> um, 
but he's since I'm since I'm sort of you know rake thin, that shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, no, unless Mr. Blakewell is standing in the way, in which case there's a rather awkward shuffle between a very thin man and a very <laughs> fat man. <laughs> yeah, well, um, to get to where the window is to see what where the what the window looks out on, what part of the gardens. Uh, the window looks out onto the back garden. Um, that is a more conventional kitchen garden um, back here, and you can see a rather rather stout woman pulling up some carrots uh, from the garden. Uh, beyond that is the back wall of his house slash compound, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, there is a space clear where it seems he has previously done some of his rituals outside. Um, and there are various things set up there. Uh, he's got some flagstones set out, so he could draw more chalk diagrams on that. Um, there are several bowls of water out, and uh, various other jujaws and nonsense things from your point of view. Uh, maybe they're bathing in moonlight or something. Who knows? Who knows this man's mind? Oh, I think I do. Um... <laughs> So you, you said the windows are latched, but not um, sealed. In fact, they're they're, they're, are, they're easily openable from here from the inside, right? From the inside, easily, yeah. And um, well, make a make a perception roll. Straight perception. Uh, I think it's forty-one. Hang on, let me just double check. Yes, it is. Straight perception, seventeen. Good success. Okay. Um, Right, so the the lead framing of the windows um, has been blackened, but you can see here and there there are scratches exposing more silvery metal that hasn't had time to blacken again yet, like someone has bent back some of the lead uh, to reach inside the window. And how big are the paint? How big are the the lights? The individual lights panes. Um. Sizable for the time, but not that big. So it's it is a diamond glass window. So, you know the lat the lattice work. Yeah. So in principle, if you removed one diamond, you could put your fist through. Because his ones are quite large. If you had a relatively small hand, a, a slight gentleman or a lady, you could reach your hand through without any without any trouble to reach the um, reach the latch on the inside. Or a child. Knowing our master's child. propensity for using child assassins, um, yes. <laughs> so, um, so no, does does it look like a pane has been removed and reinstalled, or just the sort of scratching of somebody climbing through it? Um, you believe that it has been removed and put back by someone with some degree of skill. Okay, in that case, I'll open the window and look outside. I'm hoping there's a fl flower bed with maybe it's turned soil that they left some kind of trace on. Uh, hmm. Make an... Why, hmm, let me think. Um, you can make another perception roll, but at minus 10. Um Bernard might be better at uh, tracking things through gardens. Okay, well, I rolled a 96, so I open the window, <laughs> look out, and just go, nah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, all these uh, all these plants and everything, they're, they're covering up any possible track that anyone could have left. No, yeah, uh, exactly. sorry. I'm so good, distracted by all the herbs left out. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a mighty fine setup you got here. Hi. Well, Pondering thank you. I, I, I've been I've been blessed in my gardens uh, oh, by design, of course. He smiles and taps his nose with his wand. Um, but since you're gazing out on the gardens, can you make a perception roll uh, with plus twenty to your perception? Oh, uh, uh, I failed. You failed. Okay. You don't see any tracks or anything either. Well, it seems obvious that they came in through this window, uh, but how they got past the wall and through the gardens without leaving a trace, that's mysterious. 
and there's no um, looking out over the rear. We know there's a gate to the front. There's no smaller side gate, service entrance gate, or anything like that to the rear that we can see. Um, there is a small gate in the rear wall uh, for like tradesmen and so on um, on the far left hand side where you're looking out. With your permission, Dr. D, might we question your household staff? Uh, I keep them to a, a minimum, superstitious people, of course, uh, but you're welcome to question uh, those who remain. Much obliged, Doctor, much obliged. <laughs> Mistress Goodwife is, uh, that's her name, by the way, not her relationship. Uh, she is outside tending to the garden, and I have a, a man, uh, a valet. I believe he's upstairs cleaning. You will forgive me, Doctor, but um, in our capacity as... Um those who would uh, persuade people to, to uh, talk about things that they would uh, ordinarily be reticent to do so. It is our experience that uh, servants are best questioned outside the presence of their employer. It loosens their tongue somewhat. Uh, of course, of course. I, I shall remain here and distract myself with some reading. Well, good masters. Any um, other business? Do you notice anything that um, suggests that Doctor D might be a woman pretending to be a man? <laughs> it's possible. I'm very suspicious that he's a witch. Go and pull his beard really, really hard, and see what happens. <laughs> I'll, I'll avoid Enjoy doing that first. one. Because <laughs> that's how you get yeah. cursed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So who do you want to question first, or do you want to nose around the rest of the place? Unless D thinks there's anything to be gained by us padding through his property. Um... It's probably want to speak to the um, the valet first, I think, just because he's in the house. Yeah. Oh, well, um, before we go anywhere, we should probably um, just check if if Doctor D will give us some more money. Well, do you do you want to ask him that? Yeah, I, I will do, yeah. So, um, Mr. or Dr. D, um, about this um, this mirror. Yes. It's, uh, it's obviously very valuable to you. I just wondered if yeah. you're offering any reward for its safe return, um, in addition to what's <laughs> been paid by Mr. Walsingham, which is... is um, Unfortunately, it, it's not always enough to to live on. Is is what Mr. Walsingham pays. So, I wonder if you would be so kind as to offer any further reward. Does does the security of the of the crown mean mean nothing to you, sir? Can you imagine if France or or Spain had the power of my mirror and could scry upon us with in, with impunity? Does that not motivate you sufficiently to find it? Oh, that, no offense, but I can't that, see the security of the crown. Doesn't put food in my belly, <laughs> sir. I see you are of an accord uh, on that. Then food is a, of more importance than uh, than good governments. Um, uh, what do you say, sir? He says, turning to look at uh, Anstey. 
uh, Anstey has uh, um, out of uh, mostly out of embarrassment <laughs> at, this, <laughs> uh, at this shameless um, profiteering. Um, very non you uh has tried to distract himself by looking at um some of the more entertaining entertaining the more interesting uh older volumes again he's a forger you know he's used yeah. to looking for looking at manuscript bindings looking for anything uh, that strikes him as either unusual or old yes there, there's a lot of old illuminated manuscripts and so on and and plenty of other things as well there's um some transcriptions from interviews with witches, uh, which look rather interesting. But yes, uh, he turns it turns back to the other two. <laughs> Very well. If, if if coin is all that concerns you, uh, then yes, I will happily reward you more, perhaps for something worth more than mere money. Uh, well, mm. money is is fine by me. Uh, he reaches up and uh, plucks a silver shilling from behind uh, Bob's ear. Yeah, a small down payment. It is surely witchcraft. Oh. Well, if if it's uh, witch silver, it spends as well as normal silver. Well, I was thinking I might. Uh, if you wanted to give me a few of those herbs out in the garden. Uh, very well. Yes. Uh, help yourself. Fill your uh, fill your have a sec. And if I do. <laughs> All um, right. Uh, we have a word with the uh, what's her name outside or someone. Uh, yes, uh, Mistress Goodwife. Uh, all right. So presumably, Parry and Lettuce will talk to the valet while Bernard goes into the garden. Picks a load of stuff and uh, talks to the woman out there. So we shall handle these separately. Uh, right. So Bernard, uh, you make your way out out the back of the house. Um, Mistress Goodwife looks up at you and and nods good day. Uh, one of her eyes is so milky as to almost be in, entirely white with cataracts, uh, but the other one seems very keen, and uh, she looks you looks you up and down. Appraising you, and then returns to her work pulling carrots. Ah, uh, don't mind me. <laughs> the man <laughs> in the house said I could help myself to a few of these herbs. No, uh, yeah, sort of pick a few of the ones that look the look the fanciest. Yeah, herbalism is your entire thing, so yeah, you can yeah. easily uh, find some stuff there. Can you make another perception roll at plus twenty, please? Oh, I felt that time. Okay. Never mind then. Hey, you you hear about the Master's Mirror, are you? Oh, yeah, that too. I, I don't suppose you saw anything. Oh. Well, the good doctor doesn't uh doesn't let us stay the night in his house. Don't even get servants' quarters. But he does pay us a bit extra to get rooms in the village, so it's not all bad. There were some strange, strange fellas abroad in the village that night, though. I saw them when I left the inn and went home. What do you mean, strange? I mean, strange. Uh, down at heel. Uh, no offence, but not, not so different from yourselves, sir. <laughs> no offence taken. They, uh, they had swords like gentlemen, but they didn't look like gentlemen. And he didn't say so much as a good evening. Three of them, there was. I don't suppose you saw where they where they were headed. No, I just I just saw them when I left the pub. Um, they they come out at the same time. I think they must have had rooms there. I reckon. Yeah, so... I I I says I says to them, good good evening, masters, and they didn't even so much as look at me. I think I think that's that's very helpful. That is, well, glad to be helpful to such a fine figure of a man. Uh, 
All right. So, yep, yeah, you've got a bunch of herbs and a lead. So that's useful. Uh, you other two um, make your way up, up the stairs, uh, which are a lot better than the ones in the magpie, certainly. Um, the rest of the house outside of that, that sort of wizard's study doesn't look much like Dr. D uses it that that much, which means it's not probably too much of a terrible job uh, for the valet to keep everything clean. Uh, but you find him in the in the master bedroom smoothing out the sheets and uh, airing the room out a little bit. Uh, good day, sirs. Hear about the theft. Uh, I don't mean to eavesdrop, but Mr. D does shout, so. That's correct. And you would be? Yeah. Uh, I'm the valet. Uh, Master Maplethorpe. So tell me, Master Maplethorpe. <laughs> What do you know of this theft? Well, um, Mr. D uh, sent for me uh, very early this morning, earlier than he uh, usually asked to be awakened. I, I think something must have disturbed his sleep uh, for him to notice, certainly. Uh, yeah, and he sent, sent a boy to fetch me and uh, asked me whether I'd moved it or taking it for cleaning or, or whatever else. Um, I, mean, I wasn't much uh, awake myself at the time, but uh, between the shouting, we managed to determine uh, between ourselves that neither of us had moved it or misplaced it. I conducted a quick search of the house. I have an encyclopedic knowledge of Mr. D's possessions and where they belong. And the mirror was not to be found anywhere, uh, nor was it broken. Um, we then came to the conclusion that it must have been stolen, and we sent a, a man on a swift horse to fetch Walsingham. And how long have you been in the doctor's employ? I have been in the doctor's employ this past seven years, and my father before me. You like your employer? Mr. D, he's... Um, He's a lot of work, if you don't mind me saying so, so I shouldn't really speak ill of, of my employer. And it's not that I bear him any ill will, particularly. He's just um, a very peculiar and odd fellow. <laughs> but I, I assisted my father in the, in the work in the house before I took over his job, uh, so I, I'm rather used to it. Uh, dare I say it, um, I doubt anyone else could uh, serve the good doctor as well as I do. How old is this man? He is probably in his early 20s, um, but his face is quite scarred from the pox. Your father, he lives still? Uh, alas, no. He's been gone these past three summers or so. Um, he just uh, abruptly took ill and wasted away. Ah, the sweat. Merry at breakfast, dead by dinner. Quite. It was, uh, well, this day and age, death is a constant companion to us all, but it was still a, a shock. It always seemed so hale. We must uh, trust that uh, the Lord has his soul in the proper keeping. He was a pious fellow, sir, so I have no doubt, and I am much comforted by that. Well, Mistress Winter, what do you think of this fe fine fellow? Um, well, I mean, all to make him, really. Well, I hope I have been helpful in some small way and uh, not not offended either of you good sirs had i been offended you would have known it depend upon that 
but I am curious. Mm. This, yes, uh, sir. This, this thief, how fortunate he was for all the rooms he could have chosen. He seems to have chosen exactly the room where the mirror was stored. Do you think he was lucky, Mr. Maplethorpe? I I doubt that, sir. But these um, these tall windows that the doctor has had put in everywhere, they're the devil to clean. And I, I think perhaps they might grant us... Uh, as wonderful a view of the interior from the exterior as vice versa. But the mirror was encased. No? It was, but it is a, a very noteworthy object, and the Doctor does leave it upon his altar. It is perhaps the first thing you notice when you enter that room, either that or the crocodile. Sir, I, I fear you are casting aspersions that I may have communicated with the thief. With with two generations of service to, to Dr. D, I, I can assure you, I, I bear the man no ill will and seek no additional profit. My wage is more than sufficient. Of course, of course. But you understand, the times are double. I do understand, sir, and you're only doing your job. I am uh, trying not to take too much offence, but, sir, I, I am betrothed. I wouldn't risk my position on such a thing. I don't think I'm going to find anything out about this, but... Um... Does he seem sincere to me, based on the fact that I deal with liars all the time? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let me have a quick look. Yeah, same question from me as well. Yeah. So, Bob is skilled at deception, which might give you additional insight. And Harry... Uh, similar dealings. Okay, so both of you make perception rolls, and Bob can make the roll at plus 10 to perception. Roll the 21, which should be a pass. I just need to double check. Yes, that would be a pass. And parry? 24, solid success. Okay, both of you think he's being sincere. Um, he's perhaps waxing a little loquacious because he wants to make a, a good impression on, um, on Walsingham's men. Uh, but you are making him a bit nervous, but that's just because, you know, you're here investigating. You don't think he's done anything. Okay. Um, but does he have any suspicions as to who it may have been? There are um, many people with their sights uh, upon the Queen and her her counsellors, um, to have some kind of sway over the over the Doctor would be to have some sway over the Queen, which would be to have some sway over the country. Um, that they didn't assassinate the good Doctor or steal anything else suggests that they were here f specifically for that mirror, and it is uh, perhaps the jewel in the good Doctor's collection. It is the the thing he is most proud of. Perhaps they intend to use it to manipulate him, which would suggest a, a political motive. Or perhaps they are a fellow... Um, yeah, I don't know any better way to put this. Perhaps they are a, a, a fellow sorcerer, conjurer, uh, whatever you want to call it. And so they know, the, they know the value of the thing and have stolen it for that reason. Those would be my speculations and, and where my mind has wandered, sirs. So we're, we're looking for... A... 
either a Spaniard or a witch. That seems fairly likely, sir. You, you, you cut to the nub of the matter. Or perhaps a, a Spanish witch. Tell me, where, where were you born? <laughs> uh, I was born in Putney, sir. Okay, not a Spaniard. No, sir. Though my great grandfather was Welsh. It's a shame we carry to this day. No disgrace. The Queen's ancestry is similar. Well, I, I'm not sure we're going to get much more useful information from this gentleman. No. If I can assist in any other way, please, please do let me know. I, I wish nothing but the best for the master. So, uh, are you going to reconvene outside, perhaps, in case you have any follow-ups to the uh, to the mistress? Yep, I think so. Yeah. All right. So you come out and you you find Bernard um, with his satchel now now bulging with rare herbs and flowers and plants and things, um, and uh, Mistress Goodwife has almost finished filling her basket. Uh, with the bounty of the garden. Can you both make perception rolls, please? Fail. Pass. Okay, so as you come outside, um, the sun has continued its progress across the sky and is now in a slightly different position uh, to when you first arrived and, and looked out. And uh, a little glimmer, a glint of something in the short grass catches Bob's eye. I'll go and take a look. Okay, so yeah, moving over there and then crouching down, uh, you find a small glass bead uh, in the grass. And as you crouch down, uh, you see a glimmer of what presumably is another one further back through the garden towards the wall. Ah, there seems to be a, a trail here, gentlemen. And um, Steve walks over, standing, standing over uh, Winter, providing no shade whatsoever with his <laughs> <laughs> with his form. <coughs> Might as well a, be a man so thin that light can't decide whether it's a wave or particle, in it? <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. It's, it's basically like trying to find, you know, use a garden cane for a sunscreen. Um, looks down. It uh, looks down. What is it? Well, there's a small glass bead here. There's another one just there. I wonder if perhaps this may lead us somewhere. Do you have the good bead to hand? Oh, well, I have this, uh, this one I just found. Yeah. Is, is it pierced as if it was part of a necklace? It is indeed pierced through as if it were part of a necklace. Coloured? Pla plain? It is a fairly dark black colour, and the surface of it has been uh, turned into a sort of matte, shaded tone, scuffed up. Um, though uh, the scuffing seems to have been polished away on two sides of the bead. And it's spherical? Yes. Oh, like a rosary. Indeed. Hmm. Show me, where's the other one? I can't remember now. Master Winter? 
Um, it's uh, just over there. So yeah. You, you say uh, this is supposedly a rosary. Perhaps God has given this as a sign. You follow the uh, the trail. There's um, two or three beads. They lead right up to the rear wall. So someone's walked across, drip, drip, drip. Okay. Can you both, or all of you, in fact, if you're all trailing along together, following it, uh, make perception rolls, please. Um, I have an ability here called finding ways. I'm not quite sure what that means in this context. Uh, let me just check your sheet to remind myself. Um, sort of feels like tracking or following a path but... yes it's um it's kind of like evade mostly like oh, someone I see. tracking you it's okay, um, fair enough. yeah ducking away through the streets but it is is applicable here so you can add 10 to your perception before you roll okay uh zero six i, also have that, but I rolled 60 so okay. me and Bernard, I oh, very much failed. Okay, so but Ansi succeeded. Okay, um, so you you reach the rear wall and find a couple more of these beads, um, and look up. And you know you're struck by anyone climbing over that broken glass is going to be in a heap of trouble. Uh, but then you notice that right above you above where these last three beads have dropped. Um, the glass isn't glittering um, quite so much as the others. The The sharp edges on some of the shards seem to have been dulled and blunted somewhat. Hmm. If someone gave you a boost or something, you could get a closer look. Uh, yeah, I'm probably the man to be boosted, <laughs> given my yes. frame. And Blakewell <laughs> is probably the fellow to do the boosting, given his build. Yes, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so Bernard gets his gets his rough hands un under Parry's foot and hefts. Uh, Parry weighs about as much as a <laughs> If you heft, you'll, 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 you'll launch me if you heft. <laughs> <laughs> Leave Caleb it gently. Starts. It's all right. You'll, you'll drift slowly to the ground. This, <laughs> Um, yeah, so you're hoisted very easily um, upwards, uh, bringing your eye level to a, a roughly on par with the, with the top of the wall. Yeah, the glass um, about a half yard across uh, seems to have been blunted, almost like melted at the tops, um, turning it smooth. Uh, you you know, reach out carefully and gingerly and touch it, and yeah, this wouldn't cut you. You could climb over this no problem. Um, even the brickwork around these bits of glass um, has taken on a sort of smoother, almost partially melted appearance, and there is a sharp, acrid smell. You're an engraver. You work with uh, you know, volatiles. Uh, you believe some sort of acid, some strong acid has been used here. Here, gentlemen, is no common thief. Here, you see the way the brick is porous. And he kind of scrapes away at it, and presumably he can literally just break, you know, break lumps of this. Um, yeah, this some of the top brick. bricks. Yeah, yeah, some of the top bricks have been vitrified, and they just crumble at the, at the slightest squeeze. Here, you see the presence of aquavitae acid. Not, I think, a common cut purse's first choice. What we're saying is we're looking for an alchemist. Hmm. Yeah, Putney housebreaker would just have thrown a blanket over the glass and had done with it. I wonder why they didn't just throw a blanket over it. Mm. 
if I was being um, optimistic, I'd say it was because they were overconfident. If I was being realistic, I would suggest that they, somebody wants us to know what they're capable of. Either way, they're very well funded. Quite. Uh, now, Blakewell, did you um, have you filled us in on what the good wife actually said to you? Um, I believe so. I, I would assume we would have. Uh, yeah. Sort of yeah. Like, yeah. Shared information. Yeah, you can take a minute and share information. Mm -hmm. Three strangers. So should, we... should we go to the to the tavern? Can I can, just just since it's presumably no effort for him to keep me up there, and we're having this slightly weird conversation while I'm standing on the stirrup of his hands? Um, can I actually see what's on the other side of this wall? Is it like a sensible place to do it? Like you know, the, the, presumably on the other side of the wall is sheltered from the road or something like that. Uh, yes. So I mean, this is off the high street of the village, so this is well away from the road um once you're back here so yeah it's a pretty good place to do it and um there's a fairly old yew tree not that far away from the wall which will provide additional cover um it's quite thick and it grows quite low to the ground if you were going to break in because you have your finding ways uh, capability uh, this would be the optimum path you think gentlemen since uh looks up at the sky since uh it uh, it seems to be approaching noon and uh i don't know about you but i myself have worked up something of a thirst thinking back to those bloody horses um <laughs> um i have a mind perhaps to visit the local hostelry that was like a plan perhaps i've seen these three mysterious strangers Uh, one second, because this is England, and there is probably a map, uh, a pub that survives from that time. So let's see what the local pubs are called if they haven't all been turned into weather spoons. Uh, that that well-known old English pub mate named the Slug and Lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you know? Uh, there's a white heart. So, <laughs> I was just about to say white. Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> white lion. Yeah. Got that. There's a, several white hearts not that far from here. So it's, it seems to be one of the most common pub names. It's, uh, uh, but, Richard II's livery badge. So probably, mm. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, you... Um, the staff and Dr. D good day for now. He uh he wishes you you know all the best and haste in finding his mirror. Um you take a, a, a stroll through the village. Um it's fairly quiet at the moment. People are probably out in the fields and doing their other other work. Um so it's it's relatively quiet. Uh when you get to the inn there's a few of the farm workers who have um, knocked off for lunch who are hanging around there. Um, but it's it's your fairly standard sort of pub, but it's probably a bit of a bit of a way house for people on their way to London proper. So there's a there's a few travellers in here, but not not that many. Um, so yeah you can you can grab a meal and some beer. Yeah you know, just some Bread, cheese, maybe some pickled pork or something, and a couple of steins of beer each. That should do you for lunch. You get the impression that the innkeeper is um, grumpy from the way he slams down the tankards on the table. A word, oh, master. master. Troubling you. So, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. <clears throat> 
Because there's something seems to be troubling you, sir. Aye, that uh, that it is. I had three good horses stolen the other night. Three horses, you say? Three horses. I don't suppose you saw anyone suspicious that um, may have taken them? There were three fellows. Didn't like the look of them right from the start. You know, armed like gentlemen, but their clothes was all threadbare. And they never said a word to anyone all night. And then they were gone in the morning, despite having paid for rooms without saying a word either. Sounds like the people that we're looking for. Um, no clue where they may have gone, having taken your horses? Um, uh, none at all. I'm a, I'm afeard. I've uh, I've employed some people to try and find the horses for me, but uh, I have a little hope, I, I suppose, of getting them back. But yeah, so, they've stolen horses. They could be miles away for right now. Perhaps, sir. But they uh, they stand out. Like a sore thumb, these gentlemen. So hopefully someone will see him. Out of curiosity, what room were they staying in then? Ah, uh, yeah, they all uh, lumped into one room, saving money, I suppose. But I can show you if you're interested. There is a reward if you can find the horses. Oh, certainly. Uh, we're, we're... Maybe they left something up there. Well, you, we you finish your food, and um... reason, but, uh, we'll we'll certainly return the horses if we come across. Them. Well, if I get my horses back, I don't mind what you do to them with them around them or anything else that's your concern. But uh, yeah, you finish up your food, and I'll, I'll show you the room. And God bless you if you find the horses. All right, you fill your bellies uh, with beer and uh, country food, and then the innkeeper leads you up to the room that the men had uh, had hired from him. Um, there's one big bed, um, as was the custom at the time. Um, there is a sort of trunk chest that. Presumably, it's for guests to put things in. Um, there's a couple of chamber pots slung under the bed. Um, you know, nothing immediately leaps out. You don't think they've left anything much. That's a long shot. Nothing in the chamber pot. Um, someone has left a uh, a short <laughs> length of evidence in one of in one of the chamber pots, swimming in piss. Uh, can you make a perception roll, please? Uh, yep. Uh, well, I rolled sixty nine, but that is. That's a failure, but it is 69. And the second 69 oh, yeah. of, the, of the night. But, uh, yeah, it's yes. I had right. corn for dinner it's last fine. night. <laughs> it's, yes. um, it's poop <laughs> in, a, in a lake of pee. And since we're not playing Lamentations of the Flame Princess, there is of no real significance <laughs> that you can figure out. <laughs> wait, wait, who has like a significance to Lamentations? Of There's the a Flame whole Princess. supplement set in a dimension of poo. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Fecal lands, I think it's called. Cool. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I am the wizard. <laughs> the Dare wizard. you enter my pissy realm? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, that, that You've was not included any magic in this, so it can't be some. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can't do some copromancy. I was going to say, yeah, yeah copromancy. <laughs> If you had no idea what I was referencing then, I, I sounded like an insane person. <laughs> it's fine. Oh. All right. Um, anything else? You say that they managed to order this room without words. How then did they communicate their intentions to you? Uh, they had a, a letter with them. I, I think I still have it. He pats down his apron and um, extracts a piece of paper. Ah, here we are. Take it from him. All right. Uh, it's written in English, but with a very strong dialect to it. Um, it just says, uh, these are friends of mine uh, on, on business. Their money is good. Uh, please see to it. Uh, that they haven't have a good room and a good rest, and Rag it is monogrammed NR. Rag paper or parchment? It is parchment, so good paper. Um, hold it up to the light. See if it's been palimpsest. It's palimpsested. Can you make a willpower roll, please? Uh, willpower, willpower, 35. No, that's a fail. Okay, holding it up to the light, um, there is a watermark in it of some kind of weird seal or symbol. And uh, you find yourself thinking, well, the, these, these three gentlemen who hired this room, they can't be that bad, they can't be that sinister, probably... Probably decent, stout fellows, you know, just, just visiting. There's no reason to be suspicious of them. Uh, um, how strongly do I feel this? Uh, you, you feel like you're wasting your, your time here. This is probably a, probably a dead end. You know, you're just more inclined to be more positively minded towards these people, to make excuses for them. This is nothing. I tear the letter up. Oh, first time I got a letter as nice as that. It, it, is, no, it is of no account. Oh, right, you are, sir. I was hoping it might be useful. Still, who, whoever was here, my chief suspects in nicking my horses. And horse theft is indeed a grave crime. Oh, it's a hanging offence. Men are not hanged for stealing horses, but that horses shall not be stolen. Quite right you are, sir. Well, yeah, sad there's, there's nothing else in here. Um, sorry I couldn't be more help, but uh, best of luck in finding them. I, I must attend to the uh, rest of the farmers. I drop the uh, fragments of the letter into the used chamber pot. Okay. <laughs> they flutter down. But before you go, if these were your, your main suspects, were there any, any other people that it could have been? Just in case these are innocent men. Well, we we as, get as uh... as they are, are good men. Maybe there would be other Ne'er do wells that were around. Uh, we get uh, we get lots of travellers coming to and to and from the city, but uh, they were the only ones that really stood out to me. So, Master Winter has a point. We mustn't uh, let ourselves be led led around by the nose by gossip from an old maid. Well, I'll uh, I'll leave you to it, as I said, and uh, and Godspeed. And now that the paper's been torn up, that effect that it had upon you is starting to slowly fade. Um, and I sort of gl glance around as if I'm... Um, where's it gone? 
the paper. What do you mean? What? We'll see. Where's it gone? You tore it up. You tore it up. It's in the chamber pot. You can fish it out if you want. But... Don't be preposterous. And then he, Anstey, looks down and catches the sight of the uh, <laughs> floating uh, fragments. Yes, uh, not all of them hit the chamber pot. You know, quite a few fell outside the chamber pot. But uh, yes, the rest are, are slowly sinking. I wonder if we should ask Mr. D if he's familiar with anyone called NR that might wish harm upon him. I mean, the fact that they didn't speak suggests that they're Spaniard witches. Or that they're Spaniard, at least, but we know that they're witches dealing this witchcraft accessory. That's certainly a good place to start, Master Winter. All right. So, return to the good doctor. Yes. Yeah, see if he knows anyone called NR. Who is a fan, uh, probably. Uh, the, the valet uh, admits you uh, this time, so you don't get a, a wand shoved in your face or anything, and uh, escorts you to, to Dr. D who is now distracting himself by working on some kind of alchemical concoction. Ah, you're, you're back. Any any progress? Any any leads? Uh, just wondering if, if you know anyone whose monogram would be NR. 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 Hmm. Any other clues? Uh, possibly a Spaniard. Hmm. He strokes his beard while he thinks, and the beard does not come off. <laughs> yes. Yes. Ah, yes. Uh, his brow furrows as he thinks. Ah, yes. Yes. Neil Rudderford or, or Rudiford. It's hard to tell with that accent. A Scotsman. Oh, he's a he's a charlatan, a, a, a halfpenny mage, a, a reader of runes and guts. Yeah, lives in the lives in the city proper in some hovel. Yes, I I know him. Oh, we have reason to believe that he hired some men to. Take your your witch mirror. Well, if that is the case, uh, then you should uh, take it back. Uh, would you happen and to have his address? I believe I do. We had some correspondence. He, he dives into a pile of loosely organized paperwork and uh, starts churning through it. Aha, here, yes, yes. Here. Uh, now I need to pick an area of London that was actually built up back then. Um, uh, yes, I believe his little shop is in Cheapside. He scribbles down the address quickly. Here we are. Though I'd uh, suggest dousing yourselves in fleabane before you go anywhere near that charlatan. Well, it's a, a charlatan who now has your magic mirror. Not for long. I entrust you will get it from him. We will. Um, do you have? Uh, you don't have any love for the man. It doesn't matter if something were to befall him while we were retrieving it, does it? I should much prefer it if something befell him. If he is the person who is guilty, well, and otherwise, I suppose. Well, as as the the good Lord does say, suffer not a witch to live. Well, I hope you don't take that too literally. Some people think me a witch. 
Yeah, so there, there may be a reason for that. Uh, but we'll <laughs> we'll deal with with this this witch first. Theurgy, sir, is not truck with devils or witchcraft. It is entirely godly. If you say so, I'll make the sign of the cross. <laughs> um, so, anything else you want to do in Mortlake before you return to the city? If there's anything I'd want to do and anything Harry or Bernard would like to do. I don't know that I can think of. Uh, okay. No, nothing to the point. All right. So you uh, return to the city on the on the ponies and uh, return them to the ostler. It gives you your deposits back. Um, yeah, it was just as uncomfortable <laughs> a ride back, but it was slightly faster than walking so you know there is that going for it uh you're just going to march straight uh to rutherford's house in cheapside or do you want to plot scheme prepare or whatever else in any way before you go there uh i was thinking just knock on his door and run him through as soon as he answers it he's a whip <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that. We'll that. find the, the mirror in his possession. But even if we don't, he doesn't deserve to live. No, if he, All right. If he, was, if he stole it from them, why don't we try and just try and steal it back? Well, we could, but we could just walk in and take it. <laughs> You think you can kill a witch? We, we operate on... Well... We can certainly incapacitate it for long enough to... to take the, the witch mirror from it. Oh, but he'll, he'll know we're coming. He has the mirror. Um, quick point of chronology: Is this after Walsingham's made his bones with the um, with the um, Babington plot? Uh, now you're asking. Um, well, is Mary Queen of Scots dead? <laughs> yeah, let me just figure that out. I think it's before that. Um, okay. Because that's when? When is that? That's 1580s, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think this is technically before though this is one of those not quite history things. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I think before. Okay. Masters, we forget ourselves. We are not halfpenny footpads. We're not uh, Detford murderers. The question is not simply who stole the mirror. The question is why did he steal it and did he steal it on somebody else's behalf? Running him through and we lose all of that. Well, this is a good point. But, uh, you want to give him a chance to cast spells on you? Or what does a witch need to cast spells? I wouldn't know. Yeah. We could, uh, you know, if we could inca incapacitate him, we could uh, gag him, tie his hands behind his back. Well, that, that seems to have worked on the witches that I've seen disposed of in my time. Disposal is too hasty. After all, 
how do we all come to be in the service of my Lord Walsingham? Did we volunteer? Are you, Master Blakewell, such a patriot? Do you, my Lord Winter, so love the Queen? Uh, yes, I I love the Queen very much. Yes, and it, how, it would be very, very far from me um, to suggest that uh, you do as Lord Walsingham bids, because for you to refuse would be a death sentence. Yes. I mean, you you will be well aware that I'm talking through my arse when I say I love the Queen. Oh, yes, I'm just totally preserving the fiction for the benefit yeah. of our working relationship. <laughs> <laughs> if this is... Uh, if we... Um... If we play the hand we have been dealt with subtlety, perhaps there might be no need to confront this man at all. How do you propose we do that? Place a watch upon him. Who he sees, where he goes. Well, I could certainly do that. I could beg outside of his house somewhere. Lived in cheap side. Plenty of other beggars around. True enough. So, is that going to be the plan then? Stake, stake out his house and uh, then proceed from there, yeah? Yes, on yeah, the have, way. Have a, have a chat with the, the network of beggars around there to see if they can help as well. Okay. Well, we're coming up on the two-hour mark, so let's take our break there, because um, that seems like a natural break point. Um, so we'll be back in, what, 10 to 15 minutes. Cool. All right. Sound good? Okay. I'll remove everybody, but you might want to mute yourselves as well, and uh, we'll see everyone else uh, in about 10 to 15 minutes.
gonna do? Grim. That's how it looks. I'll take Grim right now. I am the Grim Reaper. The Grim. The boss is a good. And make it Grim. A Grim tale indeed. It's a little Grim. Meaningless and Grim. It's the Grim. It's Grim. Pretty Grim, huh? Things look Grim. And we're back, hopefully. Uh, Hello. 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 Good. All right. And so we only lost two viewers, but we're on break, so that's good. <coughs> and W, you do not right. want my nudes. I'm definitely a man. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case there was any doubt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, I told you that was a merkin, not a beard. Right. Uh, so I think where we left it, um, Bob was going to go and pace uh, Neil Rutherford's little magic shop or whatever it is, uh, observe it, figure out what's going on there, and then you were going to proceed from there. Yeah, yeah, while he uh, have a chat with the local beggars, then yes. Uh, while he's doing that, I'm either going. I mean, I'm assuming that uh, Walsingham's too busy to take direct personal reports from footling little nobodies like ourselves. So, um, however, we usually contact him um, or provide him with information. I will basically give him everything that we have, just in case it all goes terribly wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well. Um... You and Bernard can um, camp out in the nearest drinking hole and uh, you can write a report and send it with a runner, you know, give a, give a lad a, a shiny, whatever the smallest denomination of currency of the time is, and send him running off with it. So, yeah, you can report in. Um, so Bob heads to the street and... Puts out feelers amongst the uh, beggars in the area. So that is a core capability of being a beggar. So web of contacts, underworld contacts, black market contacts. So this first two are probably the most useful. Make two knowledge rolls, both at plus 20, and if either succeeds, your contacts know something. Okay. Which is 30, so 50 or under. First one, 14. Second one's a fail. So pass and a fail. Okay. But one success. All right. So yeah, you find you find the right address, um, but the windows are all shuttered, and there doesn't seem to be any activity. Um, a couple of people sort of come by, looking slightly furtive, and check the check the door, but it is uh, apparently locked uh, and bolted, so they they don't get entry, no matter how much they knock. Asking around a, a few of the beggars from the surrounding area. Um, yeah, they know Rutherford. He yeah, sells cures and um, various substances. Um, it's rumoured that he makes kind of illicit gunpowder for some people as well. Things like that. Uh, reads fortunes, provides abortifactants to young ladies from the area, uh, that sort of thing. Um, he seems to kind of get away with being a, a, a semi-public magician by making himself somewhat useful. Uh, far more controversial than him being uh, a magician is, you know, the the rumor is that he's a Catholic, which is, you know, that's that's not allowed. <laughs> can't can't do that. 
Um, they also report that they haven't seen him for about the last day or so, um, but a couple of porters have come and gone uh, at least twice from the house uh, with with a trunk, a big trunk. Okay. Sounds like we be skipping town. Pulses coming with big trunks. Yeah. Um, so you can you stake out the place for a while. Um, gets into the early evening, um, about when you'd think about taking supper, but not not dark enough yet to be too much of a problem. Uh, when a pair of porters carrying a, a clearly empty and quite light trunk at the moment uh, return to the house. Uh, one of them takes a, a big ass key um, from his belt pouch, uh, unlocks the front door, and they both manhandle the trunk inside. Yeah, as the, um, it's like as soon as they've unlocked the door and opened it, I'm going to yeah. approach them and ask them if they have any arms for the poor. <laughs> Uh, what's your persuasion? Um, my persuasion is 45. That's pretty good then. Uh, and you are a beggar by trade as well as an actor, I think. Um, yeah. So. <clears throat> um, I, I can help you with this heavy trunk in return um uh, no no that that's quite quite a right a slip of a thing uh like you, you you poor lad uh one of them rolls his eyes the other one turns and um flips you a halfpenny yeah get some food down you oh thank you sir i i can't let good deed go unpunished though i'll let me come and come and help you Uh, they look at each other and then shrug. I suppose it can't do any harm. Can always use a, a third shoulder to carry this thing. Oh, you're a little short. Well, at the very least, I, I can help load it. It looks like it may be empty now, and you, you seem to be going in to load it up, I, I suppose. And oh, this I can is help. the well. This is the this is the last trip, but you can you can help carry it. Just uh, wait here on the step, and they carry the oh, box. No, inside. no, it's, it's fine. I'll I'll come in and, and give you a hand. As you please. So they so walk I'll, in. They well, they well, set I'm the trunk there. down on the ground. Yeah, you walk in after them. Um, yeah, I, I just want to and, see if I can see anything that might be what we're looking for. Uh, anywhere well, they they go off upstairs, um, and you hear rummaging and, and moving sounds up there. Um, the rest of the place, you look around, um, anything of value seems to have been taken. Um, the furnishings have been left behind. Um there is a, a back room, like a sort of um, scullery or larder, that's been turned into a, a much lesser version of uh, Dr. D's little um, wizard study. Only all the wizardy stuff has been taken. All that's left are some chalk scuff marks very similar to the ones at D's place on the ground. Okay, and there's, there's no sign of this mirror. No sign of the mirror here, no. Okay. So I, I guess I'll follow them upstairs and just, like, pester them with questions, like, so who <laughs> here, what are you doing, where's he going? Um, uh, our, our employer's uh, going on some kind of some kind of trip. Uh, do you say where he's going? Don't, don't think so. 
don't know we're not really paid to ask just to move stuff so we had to take stuff from here to his temporary lodging and uh then to meet him in the morning to move it all down to uh down to the ship i, I assume oh where's the temporary lodging i could give you some help getting that uh, we know the way we've been to and fro there twice already well yeah but yeah, you know you carrying carrying heavy things no another well, farthing yeah, gonna... I, can, I can help you unload at the other end well you're gonna help us carry it already i'm gonna help you carry it, but you you know you're gonna have to unload at the other end and you know, well, farthing to get off work early you can't complain about that I mean, you're right there, I suppose. Um, well, yeah, you can you can tag along. It's some some oval on the bridge. Okay. Well, uh, you tell me what to load into the the box. And I'll, I'll give you a hand. Well, grab those clothes there and and fold them up. We're getting the uh, last of the last of the candlesticks. Uh, I think that's about it. It's only going to be about half full. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll just help them to the best of my ability. Yeah. So, uh, the, the clothing is slightly out of style. You know, a few years old, a bit, a bit worn, uh, a little bit yeah. musty. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem like there's much left here that needs transporting they're just grabbing the last few things that are probably needs All right you're gonna help us carry it then yeah sure how are you gonna slip away to inform the others or are you gonna trace it to the far end and then come back i'm gonna help unload at the far end and i mean he's not leaving till the morning so yeah all right, so between the three of you and a, and a half-empty box, you make very short work of carrying it through the streets and the uh, the evening's bustle um, onto the bridge, which is encrusted with cheaply made wooden buildings and you know hovels and shops. Um, and they stop at some rooms above one of these little shops. Um, the shop's just a kind of hole in the wall place selling smoked fish and shellfish from the river uh you don't think you'd chance your stomach on buying any but uh, it seems that they rent out the rooms above uh, it's a very rude crude hovel with loose planking and the the wind whistling through the gaps um but you go up with the uh, other two and add mm -hmm. this box to a stack of another two uh that are there um there is a man rooming up here he's sat at, uh, at the table uh reading from some leather bound tome uh he's a fairly burly uh or fat man depending on how generous you want to be with a bushy orange beard and um sat around the table with him are three men in plain brown leather jackets, um, high boots, broad floppy hats. Um, they have long, greasy hair, and they're carrying battered but serviceable looking swords and daggers. Uh, they're playing some sort of game of cards with him. Either they all have lisps or they're Spanish. Um, there's... Presumably some sort of secret signal to say I'm a Catholic as well. Presumably. Or in your case, not so secret, since you've been crossing yourself constantly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I, I'll um, attempt to give some sort of signal to the man. Okay. Um, I don't know what that would be. Um, well, funny handshake, I guess. Shake his hand and draw a cross with my index finger on his palm. 
yeah, was shown three fingers to represent the Trinity or something. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the the Scots gentleman uh, doesn't notice, but one of the one of the Spaniards does. Uh, he gabbles something at you in Spanish. Do you do you speak Spanish? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm an actor, so maybe <laughs> literacy stuff seems. Um, yeah. The languages you speak in the character sheet. Oh, uh, I don't. I don't remember. Um. I don't think the book has a decent index, which is a bit of a bit of an oversight. Um, if we make a roll on it, I guess, like knowledge. If I roll on yeah, that, yeah, make make a make a roll. No, I critically failed that. So. Okay. Um, no, you don't. You don't know Spanish at all. Not a word. Not a single solitary word of Spanish has ever crossed your lips or ears. <clears throat> uh, so when he but looks over and says dead. something to you, you think he's mad, speaking in tongues, possessed. Yeah, I'll, I'll visibly make the sign of the cross. Uh, he, he tries to, to talk to you some more, but when it's clear that you don't understand, he sh shrugs and returns his attention to the cards. Well, there we are, young sir. All done. Uh, you want to come back in the morning and help us? There'll be another another shiny halfpenny in it for you. Yep, I, I will be right back here in the morning, sir. Right, you are. Uh, well, Master Rutherford, there's your boxes. I don't think we missed anything. Uh, we'll be over at the pub if you need us. And they um, doff their caps to him and uh, head out. I'll uh, head back and inform the rest of the group about the whereabouts of the man we're looking for and all this stuff. All right. So Rutherford and uh, three other mysterious gentlemen are ensconced in a hovel, um, some rooms above a shop on the bridge. You're both so muted need, in case you need forgotten. to work out how to how to get the boxes without getting caught. Although I suppose we could go in, say we're acting on authority of the Queen, and have and arrest them. <clears throat> have them thrown in the tower. I mean, there's Spaniards there. Assuming I recognise that they are Spaniards and not just crazy people. <laughs> It's 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 technically not an offence to be um, in possession Spanish. of a Castilian accent at this point. <laughs> 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 However much we we might regret that state of affairs. Um, a, a Scotsman hanging around with Spaniards does seem a bit like the kind of thing that might want questioning in the tower. It does. It does. Especially one potentially linked to the disappearance of these artifacts. But so, the only downside about getting the authorities involved is if I remember Walsingham's briefing correctly, one of the objectives here is to make sure that gossip about the mirror doesn't start leaking out beyond the court and associating the court with with sorcery which is why we need to just keep it to this is a group of spaniards and a scotsman acting shady and we're on we're on authority to root out traitors because that, that letter was fairly non-specific wasn't it it didn't mention the mirror 
So yeah, yeah it, was, it was just a general thing, wasn't it? But that unfortunately yeah. that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> At least only... no, the, the letter we were given with our authority. Oh, I see. Sorry. Yes. 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 <clears throat> um. It does, but the only trouble is, let's say we go and fetch, I don't know, the constabulary or the watch or whatever. Once they're in manacles, if they were minded to, they could start talking. Could just sneak in there and uh, steal it back. We just need them distracted so that we're not having to fight them. You only saw Rutherford and the three Spaniards. That's right. Isn't yes. It? No other servants. Nothing like that. I uh, didn't see any, I don't think. Although, I mean, we steal it back. If we steal it back, what's to stop them from just uh, nicking it again? Yeah, I, I did mean I did I did mean to retcon and suggest to D that maybe he invested some friggin' shutters, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got we got to steal it back, but in a way that sends a message that you know don't go after it again. Mm. Maybe steal it back and then. Light his warehouse on fire when we leave. <laughs> um, but, like, well, you're a herbalist. Do you have any means of putting people to sleep? Um, that's a good point. Like a, um, a nice deep sleep. Uh, They're not going to wake up from while we rifle through their possessions. I've got some <laughs> poison. <laughs> some kind of sleep. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would still deal with the problem. They're playing cards and drinking. We can easily... Like, I, I can disguise myself. I have stage makeup and stuff. I could... Um, we could intercept their drinks, poison them, and... Well, you did get a bunch of rare herbs from Dr. D's garden as well. Uh, I was going to ask what what herbs. Because uh, I think yeah. from a wolf Spain, it's like you have to. It's like one you have to get in the veins. You can't ingest it. Yeah, I'm just looking it up. Um, wolf Spain always uh, applied to arrows, oh, yeah, arrows, yeah, or other pointy things. Uh, said to kill men and beasts alike within half an hour. Yeah. Um, Feed them that so sure, that's going to gonna make them have the most horrible hallucinations ever. Um, and potentially kill them if you feed them enough of it. But it's, it's the kind of thing you could give someone if you wanted them to think that um, a very powerful wizard has decided to take his revenge on them. I would imagine um, that, that John D would have had. Bullrush can be used to produce a sleeping ointment. Um, I'm just seeing if there's anything else. Uh, oh, deadly nightshade in very small quantities causes sleep. But if you use Ooh. too much, it can cause madness and death. Ooh. Perfect. Have you like mentioned the uh, append the herb appendix in uh, Maelstrom? <laughs> any point? It is very good, isn't it? It is. The yeah, best. This, this is the reason why I chose the herbalist as the character. The, yeah. The one thing that uh, Maelstrom did really, really well is is uh, is herbology. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, there's a section in the back of the book. That just has like pictures of like all the different herbs and like the effects and what they do. It's so detailed. <laughs> it's, it, it's really good. It's a, it, yeah. Yeah. 
uh, fumitori, for example, um, prevents hair from growing on your eyelids. It's very useful. Uh, <laughs> um, well, that is a problem that I struggle with daily. Hairy eyelids. Yeah. I think Nightshade is probably your best. Oh, oh hang on. M or Mandrake. Uh, this herb sends to sleep whoever takes it. The sleep is deep and will last at least five hours, for which time the character cannot be woken. I'm inclined uh, to just preparation. Put nightshade and, and kill the Spaniards with it and leave the wizard alive. <laughs> if you think you can do the doses correctly for that, Mr. Blackwell. I think I could uh, give it a go. Okay, so Deadly Nightshade. Well, technically, I'm supposed to make you prepare it for a week, but uh, I don't think that's necessary. Um, so you just need a means to get it to them. We need to intercept their drinks because they'll be coming up from the bar below. Well, to successfully prepare the uh, the nightshade into a tincture yeah, suitable, um, can you make a? Yeah. You can actually mess up the um, preparing roll and like botch the uh, like. Yeah. I think the one for nightshade is that if you do it wrong, it just like. It doesn't cause them to sleep, it just kills them. Yeah. <laughs> but otherwise, it's very effective. Um, okay. Can you make a knowledge roll at plus 10? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> what? Botch? Uh... It's extremely high. Uh, 99. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> oh, they're all okay. dead. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> Brilliant. Just a, a very heavy thud on the floorboards of the room above us. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, all right. Well, we will find out what happens when you apply the poison. Mm. Uh, but yes, you managed to create a, a tincture of, of the of the juices of the nightshade, uh, preserved in some white spirit. So now you've just got to get it to them. Any of you gentlemen familiar with playing cards? Uh, Parry probably has played a hand or two. Yes. So, Simon, you're the expert on on cards. Uh, what was the state of play with cards in Tudor times? Oh, yeah, they had um, printed cards that were cheap as shit. Cool. Yeah, everyone probably would have had the, the ability to play them and um, yeah. necessarily own them because if you're a um, but yeah, paper production existed and block printing the cards existed, so I can't see why they would be out of the reach of anyone with a few to spend. Yeah. So you just got to get within reach of these people to administer them this nightshade somehow. Yeah, so they're, they're currently playing cards. Perhaps you could um, see if you can join them. They've had a few drinks, so might be willing to try and make you part with some money. And whilst doing that, uh, 
I could slip the poison into their drink, or Mr. Blakewell could. Um, but it, I, I think if I return to them with you and um, pose as though I've found a, someone that's an easy mark to take money from. Um, seeing that they're playing cards and are obviously <coughs> on the right side of history, as far as I'm concerned, but um, yeah, I, I think I could persuade them that you're worth playing cards against. You just have to play sufficiently badly that they don't suspect anything and just keep and them they busy. While... Met you, though. <laughs> Sorry? They've already met you. That's the point. They've met me. I've seen them playing cards. And. Um, oh, sorry. I wasn't paying attention. Probably. Yeah, so I'd, 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 else. I'm coming back with somebody that I think they could take some money off of. So I'll have a quiet uh, okay, word and say I've, I've uh, met this gentleman that was flashing his cash. And seems seems to me he knows how to play cards, but not very well. Um, yeah, that's good. Uh... Perhaps you might want to play a few rounds with him and take him for all he's got. All right. It, is that the agreed upon plan then? Yes, I mean, I, I, I will point out that there won't be much in the way of dissimulation going on in terms of playing cards badly, but <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. The best lie is mostly truth. Yeah. Um, I'm quite happy to, yes, I'm quite happy to play my part um, playing cards. I, 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 um, I have nothing in the way of sleight of hand or anything like that, so it's going to be down to one of you two um, gentlemen inverted commas to uh in, in more ways than one inverted commas um to uh actually slip me slip in the mickey um yeah. i've got deception is, is there a sleight of hand ability or would deception be um nearest thing like pain injury streetwise it seems like i would do a bit of sleight of hand but yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I think um deception is a good choice for it. Um that's probably gonna be your best bet. I mean, this is a one shot. None of us, are, well, apart from Jack, none of us are particularly uh, au fait with the system. So, yeah, deception sounds like it would work to me, uh, or at least be an excuse for making the roll without being noticed. Yeah. Actually, just um, we, we've got someone Sorry. distracting them at the time as well. So, so yeah, don't even need to be particularly subtle about it. It's just when they're not looking. All right. So you head back there. Um, Bob in front, pres presumably being a recognizable face. Um, yeah, you got the rickety staircase up the outside of the building um, to the door to the rooms. Um, you can hear a little bit, of, a little bit of laughter. Um, and some conversation in that gobbledygook they were speaking before. Yeah. I'll, I'll knock on the door. Okay. Um, you hear a chair scraping on boards, and uh, the door opens a crack, and a mustachioed man uh, looks out at you. Okay. Uh, no, no, my name is, is Bob. Um, I was here earlier. I wonder if I could speak to your master? Just just very quickly. 
I, I don't mean to interrupt. He looks confused for a second. Um, uh, Senor Rutherford, uh, es, es Bob. Uh, it box carry. See, uh, tell him to fuck off. No, no, I, I think it's in, in your interests that you at least allow me a very brief chat, sir. I hear the chair scrape again, and the mustachioed man retreats from the door. And you see the uh, the man with the orange bushy beard look out through the crack. What do you want? I I noticed you were playing cards with your um, comrades here. Um, I, I, I came across a man. I came came across a man with uh, some money that wishes to to play at cards, and I I think uh, you may want to play against him if you catch my drift. Oh, I is he uh, loose with his coin? Is he? Seems that way, so yes. Um, loose with my coin. Loose with my coin. How very dare you, sir! I will tell you that I am England's primero primary player. Primary primero player. Here, yeah. and hold on. As you can see, he's see? had a few to drink as well, sir. You see. I'll wager this against any man. And uh, and this other gentleman. Right, ah, he's my man. He's he's here to keep an eye on me. You don't think I'd be wandering around here unaccompanied, do you? Good God, look at it. <laughs> he seems undecided for a long moment, and then shrugs and opens the door to let you in. I come in then, could use a bit, wee bit more coin. Uh, well, well, while you're playing, sir, allow me to fetch you some more drinks. Seems with with further people at the table, we could do with some more ale flowing. I run to the tavern, fetch us a fetch us a pitcher and a bottle of wine. Uh, the the Scotsman flings a uh, silver shilling in your direction. Something decent. Thank you, sir. I'll I'll, I'll return shortly. May may I? Uh... Take a small amount out of this to myself and ale, sir. I go on. The two, sir, and I'll I'll go down to the bar and get a pitcher, yeah. a bottle of wine, and a handkerchief. Some of mugs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sam, you you still have a bit of ch bit of change after that. Um, but yeah, you can all take seats around the around the table. Uh, the Papery cards are, are reshuffled and yeah. handed out so once as you can decide I, on. Um, sorry, as I, no, go I sort, of say, sort of say to Ansi, yeah, uh, I sorry, you sure you want to play play <laughs> play this game against them? You remember how much you lost last time? No oh, nonsense, nonsense. I mean, look at them. And, and and don't crowd me, man. Go and sit over there, pointing to a table. I mean, uh, uh, you know, he's not. He's you're my servant. You're not going to sit at the card table with uh, me. Go don't say that in one year. Yes, yes. You pointing to Rutherford. You're Scottish. Uh, I well well spotted. Though I've lived in uh, London these past ten years. Uh, you're not the only Scot to be to have the misfortune to be in England at the in these times. Wink, wink. <laughs> he seems to have only passing interest in the card game, while the Spaniards are very, very much caught up in it. Uh, you're deliberately losing, yes. Um, I don't or know that I've bad. Got I've, I don't know that I've got the sophistication to lose in a way that's convincing. I, I'll just let the odds fall as they may. I'm not going to try and cheat it one way or the other. <laughs> I mean, to the... To, I, I mean... I was running yeah, on the assumption that they probably will cheat, 
So, <laughs> so just let them. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you've played a, a couple of hands, and just by sheer odds, because there's more of them than there are you, uh, yeah, you're losing fairly fairly consistently by the time Bob returns with the wine and the pitcher and the mugs. Uh, now, which of you two, yeah. sorry, we should have established this, which of you two has the poison? Oh, the poison is in the drinks. Oh, you've already put it in? And Do I know this? Point of me going off to... <laughs> well, I think that uh, was the plan. <laughs> was Fair enough. Give them some drinks and give it to them. So uh, I hope you, so you understand that that's the plan. <laughs> um, you... If you went all the way there, got the drinks all the way back, <laughs> and then put the poison in. <laughs> <laughs> So you bring the poison in the pitcher of ale, the bottle of wine, both, the mugs. What, what's the... I was going to split the, the poison scheme? between the ale and the, the wine. Okay. Um, um, so of course, we'll, you're not, no, not an expert, but Bernard has told you how much to administer. Yeah. Enough to kill four people. Yes. <laughs> All right. So you um, pour out the ale, and uh, the mugs are, are passed around, and, uh, and the cup with the with the wine. Um, do, should should Parry be reminded not to drink? Uh, I'll I'll give him a wink. Okay. Fair enough. As yeah, as you hand me the glass, or just even just as you hand me the glass, turn your back on them and sort of pass your palm over the glass to say, uh -uh. "Yeah, <laughs> that's good enough, isn't it?" Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so uh, yes, um, everyone continues playing cards and uh, drinks. One of the Spaniards wrinkles his nose and looks suspiciously at the mug. La cerveza inglesa sabe a mierda. Uh, what's that? What, what, what's that? He says uh, English ale tastes like shit. Well, I think that's an outrageous statement. <laughs> uh, surprisingly, <laughs> supply, surprisingly rapidly, they all start to look ill. Um, they seem to have trouble focusing on their cards. Um, the the Scotsman's face breaks out in a rash uh, that you know runs runs down his throat. Um, one of the Spaniards tries to tries to stand and he he slurs his speech. That it's hard for you to tell, not being native speakers. Uh, and then they all start to convulse and and froth at the mouth and fall away from the table, twitching and spasming on the floor. Uh, one of them is apparently having a, a vision of Jesus. Uh, you can make out that much from what he's saying. Uh, but within five minutes, all four men lay still on the floor with froth at their mouths and terrible rashes all over their bodies. And um, their bodies contorted and twisted in uh, horrifying ways. Oh, bloody hell. I think I may have used a bit too much. Well, Master Baker. Oh, the, uh... The, the boxes uh, are, are down there. Let's go and have a very full through them. See what we can find. Master Breakwell, Breakwell, are they dead? So, uh, uh, wait, how would the guy from the Sarah sort of check? I don't know what a pulse is. Um, <laughs> Kicking in the bollocks, see if yeah. they say <laughs> ow. <I don't... laughs> put, see, put my hands over their mouth, see if they're breathing. No, they're not. They're not breathing. I'll, I'll they're... give one of the Spaniards a, a kick to the gut and see if he reacts. <laughs> no, uh, you drive whatever air was in his lungs out. <laughs> I'd, I'd say he's dead. <laughs> in in my non professional opinion. <laughs> Now, uh, we want to secure this door because we know the porters are coming back today, don't we? 
Uh, in the morning, you've uh, got to plenty in the morning, of time. But I, oh, okay. Fair enough. I, I would suggest that we leave a note for the porters to say, gone on ahead, um, please load the uh, boxes onto the boat and we'll pick up at the other end. Everything fine here. Have left to engage in my hobby of carriage surfing. <laughs> <laughs> throw the bobbies over the um, bridge into the Thames. No one will find them for a couple of days. Yeah, true. By what's a, point, what's a couple more bodies in the Thames? Yeah. Well, um, let's actually um, search them all first for any documentation, any letters they might be carrying, ciphers, that sort of thing. The usual Elizabethan intelligence craft stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a few letters. Uh, in Spanish. Uh, there's quite a lot of money on them. It seems um, that Mr. Rutherford had paid them quite handsomely for their assistance. Um, a couple of them had rings that identify them as minor members of the um, Spanish nobility. Uh, Hidalgos, I think it's called. Yeah, Hidalgo class, yes. Yeah. So um, poor, poor knights like the um, third and fourth sons of a noble family who basically became mercenaries. Um, um, assuming that Winter and Blakewell are going to basically take all the cash, but the rings, are, any anything that identifies who they are, that's going to yeah. be kept and go back to Walsingham together with all the paperwork. Yeah. Well, I was um, and then, actually wondering if we should leave that on their bodies so that when their bodies are found, there's... Um, dead Spaniards showing up that ferments them discord with the Spaniards. Yes, I, I, I wouldn't venture to know what my Lord of Walsingham's policy is with regard to um, the English state being associated with the murder of Spaniards on sovereign soil. <laughs> um, so it's probably best to leave that ambiguous. <laughs> but as long as he knows <laughs> who they were, then that's a, that's a win well, for you, us, right? You think that, but I... I want the Span the Spanish to come and go because they're Catholics. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, well, uh, Anstey is going to be busy gathering up papers because that's you know that's what he's interested yeah. in. That's what he thinks Walsingham's going to be interested in. He doesn't particularly, you know, if we're on a house on the Brit, you know, literally one of these kind of medievalish houses built on bridges. There's probably a window that you can literally just turf them out of straight into the flow of the yeah. Room, right? Yeah, yeah, easily enough. It's one advantage of where you are. You can just basically throw them out the window into the river. Yeah, so he's not yeah. going to he's not going to stop or be in a position to stop uh, Winter and Breakwell doing that if that's what they're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Nick everything that's not bottled down. Yeah, um, so there's a bunch of alchemical <laughs> gear and herbalist gear in the boxes. So you know, that, some of that's of use to you. The rest you could um, sell or pass on to the good doctor. And you do find the mirror. Um, nestled in amongst uh, the better clothing, sort of wrapped up and bundled in layers and layers of, um, of fine cloth to keep it safe. So mission accomplished there. Um, oh, perhaps, um, perhaps with the letter we could advise a change of plan. Um, goods need to be shipped to... Oh. Yeah, could do. Um so yeah, disposing of the bodies out the window into the Thames. Yeah, it's chucked in the river. Yeah. The yeah, the the Thames at this point is probably a fairly non Newtonian fluid, so <laughs> the consistency they, 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 of they bounce. <laughs> yes, the consistency <laughs> of custard. <laughs> I mean, they haven't got anything identifying on them anyway, have they? So how's anybody going to know? I mean, yeah. Extremely competent seamstress might go, oh, this is a Spanish stitch or whatever. But, you know. <laughs> yes. Well, they've still got those rings on. Which no, they haven't. They I've have. got them. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, and then you report back to, to Walsingham, who uh, rewards you all uh, with a shiny gold coin each. Um, congratulates you on a on a job well done. Um, yeah, you conducted that rather cunningly and without any direct fighting, so we never got into the combat system. <laughs> but uh, 
<laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, who am I to to take away from succeeding in the most cunning way possible? Well, um, and also because of a botched alchemy roll. Well, <laughs> yes, that too. <laughs> if I, if I right. remember the the combat system is actually like is probably like the one of the weirdest things about this game. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's not it's not versus. So it it's not like you have to roll against somebody else who rolls. It's you have to roll against your own attack score, and then if you succeed, they then have to roll against their defense score. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you can um, get into a situation where, like, if you have like a really high attack score and they have a really high defense score, you can end up rolling for hours <laughs> against. <each other. laughs> it's the it's the one part about Maelstrom that is like the. Uh, there's, they didn't think it through. <laughs> yeah, I get what they intend from that as the, as the kind of cut and thrust and um, and parry and so on. But it, yeah, it's a bit. Once you get to higher skill levels, it's it, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> um, and wounds are counted up, so when you get wounded, you note down the individual numbers of the wounds to show the severity of each wound and the total. And once the wounds get higher than your endurance. Um, you are unconscious, and if your wounds ever reach 100, then you're dead. Yeah. Um, Non-lethal attacks take away from your endurance, um, and once that's all gone, then you're exhausted or knocked out or whatever. Um, armor works by reducing damage. You only get one action per turn, I think, as well. So uh, that's that's something. Um, a critical, though, is always a hit, uh, with with no defense allowed to to make against uh, to make against it. So that that helps a little bit. Um, the other thing we didn't really cover was magic, though. If you hadn't poisoned the the Scottish Magus, he might have used some magic. Magic is reminiscent of that in some other games um i don't know whether they were influenced by maelstrom but basically the more unlikely what you're trying to do seems the more difficult it is um and you roll on your knowledge almost always with a penalty uh and your will so you need to succeed on both roles <laughs> to make magic work so if you want to do something like blow out candles that's something that could just happen. So you'd roll on your knowledge minus 10 uh, and make a will roll to try and succeed. And magic also exhausts you very quickly. So magic is more useful as a sort of um, intelligence gathering or boosted effect, um, that sort of thing. And I, I know there are people who will absolutely hate that loosey-goosey sort of... Um, <laughs> sort of thing about it and i get that i do i do but actually um i really like it i think it's an excellent way to handle something that is inherently mysterious and odd and ill-defined yeah. yeah um and of course you you can get bonuses from having you know certain equipment or working in your study that kind of thing and there are specializations of magic so you can choose to specialize again that's fairly loosey-goosey but you could choose to specialize in a particular element or necromancy or, or whatever, and you'd get a small bonus within your area and a penalty everywhere else. But uh, I quite like it. Mm. Uh, right. Uh, well, um, yeah, mission accomplished. Because um, it's a one-shot, no need for experience. Uh, but if we were doing experience, it kind of works like uh, BRP, Call of Cthulhu type stuff in that you uh, roll against your statistic to see if it gets higher. Um, so that's how that works, if anyone's interested. Uh, you can buy hard copies of the modern editions of Maelstrom, um, the Maelstrom Companion, and Beggar's Companion, and a few other bits and pieces. I think there's quite a few adventures and so on from Arian Games on drive through and elsewhere, if you're interested, there is a review over on my main channel, if you want to go and watch that. Um, don't know what we're going to do next time, and I don't know whether it's T-shirt running or me next week, given how he keeps being 
shanghaied into doing various things but we shall see um anything anyone want to say before we we stop i, I, did, I you, just did you enjoy that. the game I I did. Um, I, I I this is not really in my kind of um, ideal period, as it were. It's a bit late for me, but um, mm. I will just point out that there is also Maelstrom Doomsday, which is set mm. in Yorkshire in the 1080s, um, which has a very similar sort of layout in terms of it has a really good herbarium in it and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you want to do historical role playing, it's it's pretty good, and you can house rule a lot of other stuff easily enough uh if you wanted to there's some other stuff for it i'm trying to remember what else there was um let me just call it up on drive through uh, oh um they also do advanced fighting fantasy and they've reprinted some of the uh, like Titan and Out of the Pit. So if you coveted those when you were a kid, you can get hold of those. Um, yeah, they've got Maelstrom Domesday, which is, yeah, 1086 England. They've got quite a lot of support for that. They have a version of Maelstrom that is mid-Victorian. Um, so it's horror and investigation using the same rule set, and they have Maelstrom Rome as well, if that's more to your fancy. All right. Well, thanks for playing, guys. Like I say, I don't know what we'll be playing next yet, uh, but I will let people know if anyone watching, and there's a surprising number of you, uh, want to join in, uh, you can message me on social media or uh, Discord or whatever, and we can, we can get you into a game. Um, this is all part of my Grim Game project where I'm trying to play everything in my bookshelf that I haven't yet played in some way at least once. So thank you for watching, and thank you for playing, guys. Uh, see you next Thanks time. All right, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.